Hello, everyone. Thank you for sticking around this late in the day. I know it's been getting rather warm, and we've had food, and we've listened to Matt, and we've listened to Constantine, and now we're rather quiet and tired. But I'm going to start with a cautionary tale. This is a true story. In 2014, a man violently assaulted a woman who had left a one-star review on his book on Amazon. It's not funny. He stalked her. He sorted out her pseudonym. He doxed her, found her real name, her address, her work location, took a train three, 500 miles excuse me, to Scotland and hit her in the head with a bottle of wine. She lived, and he spent only 30 months in jail. So every time someone tells me, oh, well, I don't take reviews on WordPress that seriously, I look back at that guy and I think, you know what? You may not, but... We all love WordPress and the work that we do with such a passion that there really isn't a middle ground. There is no in-between of, oh, this guy doesn't like my plugin, and this guy doesn't like my plugin. And you take it personally, and you take it passionately because you put so much of yourself into it, and this passion leads to the place where I see the largest amount of confrontation in the WordPress world, and it is in the review system. Every single one of us is going to get a bad review. You might get a bad review on your plugin, your theme. You might get a comment on a post that you make that basically says you're terrible and you suck. This happens to everyone. And you might want to dismiss the idea that you would never be a stalker and you would never be a violent offender, but you know what? I've seen it. I've seen in the plugin repository where I've had to take people's plugins away and tell them they're not welcome in the repository because of the way they've turned around with a one-star review and treated people, because they lose their cool, because they get angry. And while I'm going to tell you something that's very simple to do, what I'm about to talk you through is actually incredibly difficult to do yourself, and not everyone can do it, and that's okay, but please try to remember that what I'm going to tell you sounds easy and is not. You have to learn from your reviews. That sounds ridiculously simple. Oh, I have a review, it tells me this is good, this is bad, I should learn. Okay, no big deal. In reality, that is so hard because I'm asking you to put aside your ego. And that is the hardest thing a human being can do. We don't do that naturally. Especially not now when the majority of people that I know have been raised to think that we can do anything and we can be anything. And while this is true, it does not mean we are infallible. And we forget that. Especially because of how much time and effort we've put into our work. And to have someone turn around and not like it hurts us. So maybe somebody's going to give you a review that is affixed to your code. And maybe somebody's going to give you a review and you're going to go, you know what, maybe I should document this better. Because we have to remember that while we are imperfect, there is also no 100% intuitive way to use code. If there was, WordPress wouldn't have a support forum that is overflowing with questions. You will never have a perfect plugin. You will never have a perfect theme. Someone will always have a question. And you will always have to learn from these things. Okay, remember, first of all, you had to learn how to use a toilet back in the beginning, right? I hope. We're going to learn from our plugin reviews, and it's going to be probably as messy and as painful as that was, too. If you don't have children, just ask your parents how much fun that was. People like to concentrate on getting a good review. They want the five-star review, right? Wrong. No, you don't. Yeah, five-star review is great. Everything's perfect. You can't learn anything from a five-star review. A five-star review is just an attaboy. It's a plus one. It's great to feel, but it doesn't teach you where people have a problem with your plugin. It doesn't teach you anything about the users. The best you can take from a five-star review is to introduce the humanism to your work. You can say, hey, that's really cool that you like my plugin. Thanks. If there's anything you think I'm missing, please let me know. And now you've started a conversation with someone, but you're starting from a negative point because you don't have any way to go forward. You have to ask them to go forward. They haven't given you anything. What you really like is the four-star reviews, in my opinion. These are the guys that are going to tell you they mostly like your work, but they see room for improvement. Someone has trouble finding information is one of my favorites. They say, I, I couldn't figure out how to do X. And you can say, well, you know, I put this, this note about this in the fact. Where would it make more sense for you to read? Don't be afraid to ask that question. Don't be afraid to start the conversation with them and say, what was it about the cowbell feature that you really didn't like? Was it too much cowbell? Engage these people. Engage them and learn from them based on what they say and how they say it. 
The review we really don't want, though, is the one where people are really, really angry, like this guy. They're going to call you names, and they're going to abuse you. And you might be able to talk to them, and you might, you might be able to get some details, some information on what's going on, but you've started from a very disadvantageous position. You have to fight them to get answers, because they're just mad at you. And if you talk to this person, which I strongly recommend you do, be prepared for a lot of snarky replies, a lot of snide comments, a lot of mean things, and try not to take it personally. Because sometimes these troublemakers, yeah, okay, sometimes they're just going to complain for the sake of complaining, and them you can dismiss. But some of them have just felt so strongly and so passionately about what you did that they have a visceral reaction. I had someone tell me that they were so upset with the change I made to a plugin that they cried. And at first I laughed, I'm like, well, that's ridiculous, who would ever do that? And then I sat there and I said, well, wait a second, have I ever had that feeling about something where I had gotten so used to using a product in one way that when it changed and I wasn't prepared for it that I just broke down and I didn't know what to do anymore? And then I realized, yeah, yeah, I did. We all did. Maybe it was something as simple as they canceled your favorite television show. It was an unexpected change that you weren't prepared to deal with. And humanity tends to pop out in weird ways when we have things we weren't set up to understand. We react very strongly. And those people, when they come and they are angry at you and they are mean at you, they're not doing it because they're bad people. They're doing it because they don't understand what just happened and they can't communicate clearly. They are, in fact, an angry toddler in the back of the car who doesn't understand why you're not pulling over for ice cream. And it's not their fault. You forgive the toddler because the toddler doesn't understand what's going on, and you should forgive the other human being too. Even though they're an adult and should be able to have words, sometimes we lose them. Sometimes, though, there just really is no salvaging the relationship and you'll have to tell someone you're sorry. See, the trick of all of this is understanding that a review is someone's experience, but it's not yours. A review is not a, I liked this plugin. A review is not a review on how a plugin worked. It's not about how someone feels, or excuse me, it is about how someone feels when they are looking at and using your product. A review is their experience with you. And it didn't start with them using your code. It started with them looking at what was presented to them. This might be your README. This might be the very first interface screen of your plugin. Whatever it is, you've made them feel something. And that's actually your goal, isn't it? You want someone to feel positively about your code, about your product, so that they come back and continue to use it. You have to understand why they feel this way in order to understand and handle their review. Their experience began with how they were introduced to your product. If that happens to be an email marketing campaign or a website where you perhaps have a lowercase p in a certain word, this impacts their experience and this impacts their review. You're going to get angry. I said that what I talk about is ridiculously simple, ridiculously basic. It's not easy to do, because I get mad too. A lot of times when I see the horrible things that people say to me, doing plugin reviews, doing reviews of my plugins, and people say some pretty nasty stuff, I get very angry. My face will turn red, my hands will shake, and I will look at them and I will walk away from my computer. Because if I can't respond coherently and calmly, I have no business responding to someone in a public venue. That's a really important thing. Remember, all of your comments are being made in a public venue. And this is important, especially if you're running a business. If you're running a business and you mouth off to someone and you tell them exactly what you think of them, that's going to impact how everyone else in the WordPress community and beyond sees you. Google will find your comments, and they will happily hang on to them forever in their search. If you can't reply politely in public, don't reply at all. My grandmother would say, if you can't reply politely in public, come sit next to me, honey, and talk. Find a friend to vent to. I do. I have, sometimes I'll subtweet on Twitter some of the things I feel, but the deepest part of me, the part that is really angry, nobody sees except my very close friends because it's not nice but it's also not productive, and it doesn't help anything. It doesn't actually even make me feel better. I'm still mad at the end of it. 
If I'm calm, though, I can process these hateful comments. So what kind of bad reviews are we really talking about when we talk about terrible reviews? Well, you guys all know this one. This is the review that should have been a support request. You know, you get that one-star review, and somebody could have just solved it themselves if they'd read the fact, but they didn't. And you can't make them do the right thing. We don't have an ability to tell someone, this really should have been a, a support question. I wish you'd asked this first before leaving me a one-star review. Here's how you fix the problem. You know, you can change your review, by the way. It would be nice if you could give me more than one star. This happens to everyone. This happens on Amazon.com. This happens on Apple. This happens on Google Play. If you really want to have fun, go to Google and check out the reviews that Apple got for their migrate from Android to Apple app. Oh, boy. <laughs> Those are some pretty interesting things that people really hated about a product. And Apple didn't do anything about it. They just sat there and they said, well, yes, but the people who need this are going to use it. And hopefully they're going to be intelligent enough to go, well, these people seem like they're just very angry fanboys who hate Apple. And that's okay. I recommend on WordPress that when you get these, you offer to fix the issue just like you would any other support ticket, but you don't give it any more precedence than you would a regular support ticket because we want to avoid being the blackmail review. The blackmail review is that one star you get because your plugin doesn't do something that they wanted. I find that one terribly unfair because you're being judged on something you didn't do. You're being judged on something that your plugin doesn't do. I have a plugin where I've made it very clear that I will not do a certain thing. It's even in the fact. It says, could you do this? I said, nope, don't want to. I don't want to support it. I don't want to maintain it. I think it's too much work, but here's how you might do it. And people still occasionally leave one-star reviews and say, well, this sucks, she doesn't do this. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. You have to have the ability within yourself to say no and walk away and accept the fact that you're not going to be able to please everyone. That sounds ridiculously simple. You know that. You grew up knowing the fact that you can't please all the people all of the time. And yet, we feel that we have to, just to get all those five-star reviews. The way you reply to a review, though, that one star that says, well, I'm only giving this one star because she doesn't have a unicorn icon. You're laughing. That's actually a comment that was made on someone's review. <laughs> and we all sat there, and we looked at it, and the developer said, can you delete that? And we said, well, it's a valid review. It's just kind of stupid. But yeah, no, we're going to leave it alone. They were upset because it ruined their perfect five-star rating. I personally would be upset because it's a ridiculous review. But at the same time, that's that person's experience. They loved everything. They didn't like the not unicorn, which was a very random thing to say. OK. If you as a customer read through and were looking at the reviews going, oh, there's a one-star review, and it's that someone didn't like the icon. How weird. And you would discount it and move on. Or you would be someone that maybe you don't want as a customer. If someone takes that review seriously, you kind of have to wonder. Speaking about reviewing the wrong things, though, you know those commercial reviews you get where somebody downloads a plugin and uses it, and there's an upsell, and they use the premium version, and they have a terrible experience, and they come back and review, and you sit there and go, wait a second, hang on. I've been told that the reviews on WordPress.org should only be for the free product I'm offering on WordPress.org. I want you to delete this review for my premium version. Are you upselling your product? Do you have links from your readme? Do you have links from inside the admin dashboard that say, hey, this is the free version. You can upgrade to premium. I'm afraid to tell you that you've opened the door and told them that part of their experience with your product involves this upgrade path. And if the upgrade path is miserable for them, then their experience of your free plugin is, yeah, the free plugin's great, but when you try to go premium, it's terrible. That's a fair review. It's a terrible review. It's, it feels wrong, and yet that's their experience. That's what happened to them using one thing and going to the next. You can't ask people to upgrade things and give you money, and then turn around and not expect them to have an opinion about what just happened. Akismet gets it all the time, too. They have the free version and the premium version. You get a lot of people coming back and saying, well, I don't like the, pre the premium version. I don't understand what I'm paying for. The other kind of one-star review, it, I don't know what he has in that little squirt gun, but his brother was not happy. And like all the other pictures I found of this, that kid is crying his face off. I'm like. 
brothers. My brother is much younger than I am, and I'm quite grateful for that. This is the review that I kind of consider insane. You'll know this one. It's filled with language that is so foul and so horrible that you wouldn't even say it at your drunkest to your absolute closest friends. My grandmother was known for being quite a foul-mouthed old lady. She would say what was on her mind, and there were some words that she would never say, and I was showing her some of the things that people do uh, before she died, and she looked at that and she said, some people were just raised wrong. These are the people that are internet trolls. These are the people that turn around and say exactly what they're thinking without a care or thought in the world for the human being that was behind the code. Don't reply to that person. There's nothing you can do to that person that is going to make them behave. There's nothing you can do to make them a positively contributing member of society. It's not worth your stress. It's not worth your mental health to engage with these people. If you have to say something just to have them recognize that you've seen it, I recommend saying, I'm sorry you feel this way and nothing more. Generally, I just don't even reply. If it's terrible enough, I will tag the post. If you go into WordPress forums, you'll notice that on the right-hand side if you're English and left-hand side if you have another language that happens to write that way, it has a little field for tags. And if you use the tag mod look, M-O-D-L-O-O-K, and you type that in, a moderator will come around and review the plugin review and say, ooh, that language is pretty bad, and they'll delete all the swear words, which means that basically you'll see a post that says, I redacted, 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 redacted. <laughs> There's a fellow by the name of Jan Dembowski, whom I absolutely adore, and he actually looks at every single review that comes through WordPress themes and plugins, and he likes to just delete all those and put in redacted. It amuses him. I don't know why he finds that fun, but he does. <laughs> My favorite review, my favorite bad review, I should say, is the mistake review. And the mistake review is the one that, oops, I actually meant to post this about Jambalaya SEO, not Yoast SEO, but they both started with a J. Well, no, Yoast starts with a Y, actually, in English. Sorry, Yoast. But, oh, I posted on the wrong plugin. Sorry about that. Again, you don't have to worry about this one. It's great. You just look at it and say, oh, okay, I understand. I'm gonna tag this with the plugin tag for the other plugin so they know to come take a look. The plugin, you can't move reviews. They're stuck right now. If you were in the previous talk, Constantine was talking about how we're on BBPress 1. We are, are not on that version of BBPress for the review forums, but the way that they're set up, the systems are not easily movable. If you ever try to move comments from one post to another in WordPress, it's about that much fun. And because of that, we just don't do it. So if you do get a plugin review that is not for your plugin, and you've made sure, oh yeah, that's not my plugin, I'm really sorry you're having this problem, you should go post over here. Use that mod look tag again, and a plugin moderator will come in and say, oh, okay, let me delete that for you, because that, that's just completely wrong. And the point of all this, the biggest takeaway, if you're gonna wanna distill my entire talk into a tweet, it's going to be this. Don't post angry, don't attack anyone, Remember, all of us are humans. Really, this should be that simple for everyone and everything. We are humanity at work. We can be nice. We can be respectful in the face of adversity. And things would be better all around if we could, but you know what, now that I've said it out loud, I think that's actually the wrong takeaway. So let me say this differently. Your business is not code, it's you. Read that again. Your business is not your code. It's not your product. It's not your output. Your business, every single business on this planet distills down to this, it's people. If you're replying to reviews, you're the face of your company and your product. And if you're here, I'm assuming you care about how people view you in the world. If you don't, please go ahead, review, reply to reviews however you want, but I'm not going to delete them, nor will I recommend you get them deleted. One or five people, 10 or 10 hundred, your company is the face. It's the face of the people who show up, who reply to comments, who handle the support tickets. Oh yeah, your support team, whoever they are, they're the face of your company. If you were to ask most people who they interact with more with a company, it's always going to be the support techs. Treat them nicely, pay them well, and remember to have them be respectful because their behavior reflects on you. 
so much more than you can possibly imagine. If your technicians, if your support tech, if your review people reply back and they are mean, you look mean. Or at least you look like the person who thinks that being mean is a totally cool way to be with people. That's going to impact your business and your future far more than a one-star review. This is a true story. There was a plugin who had a user who bought the premium version. And the user was disappointed. They didn't like the premium version. Nothing worked right. They couldn't get their images to upload properly. They pinged the developer and they said, hey, I've, I've just bought this upload. Nothing's working right. Can you help me out? It's under your support contract that I just signed by buying your product. The developer said, yeah, sure, no problem. Let's take a look. They went back and forth and back and forth, but they weren't able to fix all of the issues. It basically came down to a crux of the plugin versus the theme, and the user was unwilling to give up his theme. He liked his theme. And you can't blame them, right? If you've got a theme you're really invested in and this plugin breaks everything in it, I guess I can't use the plugin. And this, was what they, this is the decision that they came to. They said it's going to have to be the plugin or the theme. And the user said, you know, okay, I'm going to stick with the theme. Can I have a refund? Sounds fairly reasonable, right? Not so terrible. And actually, refunds were listed as something that was possible. So that you have 90 days to get a refund. And after that, we're very sorry. Well, it had been, hadn't been 90 days. It hadn't even been 60. It had been less than a month. The developer said, yeah, but we also have this clause that says, if we have gone to every reasonable extreme, we don't have to refund you. And we have tried literally to rewrite our plugin. And it still doesn't work with you, so we feel that we have done our due diligence and we're not going to refund you. OK, that can happen. The user said, well, all right. I'm going to leave a one-star review telling everyone that I hate your refund process and your plugin doesn't work with my theme. And the user carried through with this. They posted a very scathing one-star review. We redacted all of the dirty words, left it standing, because that was their experience. The developer said, okay, you know what? Fine, you're right. This was really dumb of me. But if you change your review from one star to four stars, I'll give you your money back. This is when the WordPress plugin repository came in. This is when I found out about what was going on. And it actually got worse from here because PayPal got involved and credit card companies got involved and refusal to pay fees got involved and it just became a legal nightmare for people. And this is the hardest thing. I mentioned it earlier. I said you have to be able to say no to things. It's okay to walk away. It's okay to accept the loss. If you really bank your entire business on getting those five-star reviews and you can't stand a one-star review, perhaps it's in your best interest to refund the money. If you don't care, if you think, you know what, I'm really sorry, we really did everything we could, and they still left a scathing one-star review, and you came back and you said, you know, I'm still really sorry that you feel this way, we went above and beyond. We tried to recode everything. Everyone in the public, we really did try. We're sorry that we couldn't make, meet what his needs were, but we did everything that we said we would, and more, and we're sorry. You'll actually look pretty good. In fact, there are a few companies that have done that, and it's worked out rather well for them, because they've turned around and said, look, we're people too. We're trying to make a living. It's a $10 plugin. At the other hand, you think it's a $10 plugin for crying out loud, just give him his money back. Sometimes, though, as was the case with this other plugin, it's a $400 plugin. And now you're all trying to figure out what plugin charges $400 for a premium version. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you its name. Uh, as far as I know, everything was settled out of court. I was not brought into anything after that. I simply said, don't bribe people, don't blackmail people, and don't extort people. That's not cool. <sighs> because we should try to be the best that we can. It's OK to concede defeat. The trick is that understanding that defeat, understanding that you can't help everyone doesn't mean you've lost anything. It's not gonna kill your plugin, it's not gonna kill your theme, it's not gonna kill your business to get a single one-star review. If you start getting 10 or 20 or 30 and they're all about the same thing though, perhaps you should stop and wonder what part of your plugin needs a little bit more work, what part of your plugin needs a little bit more attention and to be fixed and to be improved so that your users are happier. My name is Mika Epstein.
I work for DreamHost on our managed WordPress product, DreamPress, and they graciously allow me to spend company time reviewing plugins for the WordPress.org repository. And I now have time for questions. Thank you.